the average loan officer is going to be like, okay, well, what's his rate now, right? Because we're thinking of future obje- objections. It's like, okay, well, I could talk this guy into pulling debt out or pulling cash out for debt consolidation, but what's your rate right now, Mr. Johnson? And they say, well, my rate's 3.75. I never really go over their interest rate until absolutely ne- until we need to, mm-hmm. right? Until then, I'm, I'm actually just capturing as much leverage as possible so that I can quickly move them down the line. But you want to avoid opening up the conversation to where it's an interview, where you feel like um, they're interviewing you, right? And you'll know that it's turning into an interview if you're answering questions and waiting for another one, right? right? So you're answering the question and, and you're kind of, there's that blank silence and if there's more questions. It should always pivot to, here, watch, let me show you. I'll prepare some disclosures and have them sent to you and then take back control of the conversation and try to find more leverage. So if you can, just map out how the conversation sounds from, uh, you know, hey Jay, I got Daniel on the phone. He's an inbound call. Go ahead, Jay. Hi, good morning, Dan. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for asking. And uh, thanks for giving us a call today. Uh, My name is Jay. I am a licensed a mortgage banker. The reason why you're transferred over to me today is I actually am licensed to assist you and discuss home loan options that you're interested in. Okay, great. I just want to know what your lowest rate is. Well, we have all types of programs ranging in rates. Um, however, without knowing some information there, um, it's hard for me to you know exactly to pinpoint exactly what you'd be eligible for. I mean, we could shoot from the hip, but that really doesn't help you much. Okay, what do you need to know? Uh, well, let me first have you just take down my contact info. That way you know who's assisting you with your personal information. Okay. Okay, done. And uh, all right, so what I always like to do, Dan, um, is to establish and understand if it makes sense for my clients to even review this process and review home financing. More often times than not, we find that you may actually be in the best loan, and if that's the case, we won't waste your time. We'll tell you up front. Sweet. Um, If it can benefit you, then here's where the rest of the questions come into play, and I'll be able to pinpoint the exact um, offers and rates that will be uh, the most competitive in the industry for you. So, you know, having said that, let me kind of have you take the wheel here and tell me exactly what it is you're looking to do. Besides lowest rate and lowest payment, we get that, but what is it that you're after here exactly? You know, I just saw an advertisement not too long ago. It said, um, you know, interest rate of like 375 and I just want to know if I can get that with no cost. Well, we'd certainly be happy to look into it, but I will tell you this. I'll be frank with you here. I mean, you know, I'm not here to sell you anything and I'm not here to, you know, blow smoke. Anytime you see an advertised rates out there, it always comes with max cost. Anything in life you see advertised out there, Dan, I'll be honest with you. No one's going to advertise the cheapest, lamest, lowest cost, lowest quality product out there and put out a big ad. It doesn't make sense. So anytime you see something out there, whether it's mortgage rate, whether it's a car, whether it's a house, it's always on the more expensive end of it. So I will tell you, if you're looking for a 3.75% rate, no cost, I'll be perfectly honest with you. It's not going to happen. Having said that, what I can do is tell you what is available. And at the end of the day, the least you can expect is for me to be upfront and honest with you. Cool. Thanks. So I, I was trying to sit in and be as if I was on the phone with you mm-hmm. from everything from hearing the tonality to hearing kind of how the conversation goes. Right. And all right. So I'm going to critique it and I'm going to help you apply it to the best way that NAF will help you. OK. okay. So um, so first off, the the um, we have to find a way to consolidate the intro. Okay. Consolidate meaning I, I'm most like if because if I were let's say if I were on break mm-hmm. or let's say if um, if I was an internet internet inquiry and I just hit submit because mm-hmm. we're getting a lot of those right like right. lending tree so so mind you while you're talking my phone's blowing up right so I'm becoming anxious gotcha. right um, not only that but I didn't expect the call most of the time mm-hmm. and if I hit the submit button. Um, let's just say in the middle of work, I almost want the call to go quick, right? Right. 
Um, but fortunately, you picked up on my tone where my tone was kind of laid back and chill. So I think that's probably why you kind of, you know, match that and mirrored that tone. But if you're not doing those things, you want to pay attention to their tonality. Right. So if they're a little bit like anxiety, anxious, if they're fast, you need to speak fast too. Okay. Right. Now the consolidation that the way you open it up, like, hey, I'm licensed to assist you. I love that part because that's actually the way the script is, is modeled up with. Um, have you had a chance to read it? I have not. Okay, I mean, I but you had a chance to to hear it. I think with uh, with Sean's yeah, session. Yeah, I, I did okay. listen to. I was listening to a while. I was in between calls, but I did listen to. I did uh, listen to a good amount of it. Okay, cool. So whenever you get a chance, read the script. Um, try to find a way to maybe use that mm -hmm. because it's a very very consolidated version. And then um, remove where you had mentioned. Um, let's go and put the ball back in your court. Right, because you want to be the tour guide. You want to be because I think that is where it, the conversation stops from you controlling it to where it goes ping pong. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, um, and you don't want to get stuck chit chatting to where it becomes an immediate debate. Okay, okay. and then um, in your opening line, you never want to also include it. You had mentioned, I think I overheard you say, um, "We just want to make sure you know you're in a good place," which is good. Um, but if not, then I'll show you the most competitive rates because that that's a trigger. And it's going to ultimately change the dynamic of that conversation to where now he's just interested about rates. Okay. Um, another thing is when you had mentioned like what your goal is or what do you want to do today, uh, remove that question altogether because we already know what they want to do, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, always want, we always know that they want the lowest rate, no cost. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so if you can revise the way you – because the opening was perfect where you said um, – you know, the reason why you're being transferred to me is because I'm licensed and authorized to provide you the, the, the information you need, right? So instead of saying assist you, I'm just saying I'm giving you the information you need because that's ultimately what they're calling for. Um, but before I begin, Jay, let me just make sure you're in the right place. I'm going to ask a few basic questions. If it looks like I can help you, I'll send you exactly what we could do. Notice no rates was ever involved, no pricing, right? Um, but if I can't, Jay, I'm going to save you a bunch of time and I'm actually going to point you in the right direction. So the property that we're going to talk about, notice I never asked him what does he want to do, right? Okay. What I found through, through years of not only being here but just also selling, selling uh, pricing and selling rates is that the second that we put it, the ball into their court, they're 99% of the time they're going to talk about price. But if let's say if I were in your shoes and I got that same conversation, right? And, and the person said, you know what, I saw an advertisement at 3.75, I just want to know if I can get it. The, the, per, the ideal response would be, perfect, let me, let, me, let me help you get that, and I'm going to send it to your Gmail account. So they're assured. Right. I'm not giving them any friction as opposed to telling them, well, to be honest with you, because now they're not really interested in the conversation anymore. Okay, gotcha. Does that make sense? Gotcha. They feel, if anything, in, in so many words that you can't give them what they want. Right. Does that make sense? Here. Yeah. That all they hear is that. Um, let me be honest with you. The advertiser, it's 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 swayed the the direction of that conversation to where they actually feel dumb, right? Yeah, In so many ways, like the the prospect feels like we're kind of saying, yeah, well, you got bamboozled, and no one wants to feel like a sucker, right? Gotcha. So so even if the guy was like Mr. Patel and he called in and said, hey, I just want to know if you got a two percent thirty year fix. Yeah, perfect. Let me help you get that. It's always like, yeah, let me show you. Okay, cool. Let me let me go and prep that for you. It's always it's it's always agreeing with them first. Okay. Right. Um, no matter what they say, even if they say I want the two point seven five thirty year fix with absolutely no cost. Instinctively, because you know we depending on how we were trained or how we look at the job, we want to be educators, right? And be like, well, let me go ahead and inform him about the market. Instead, hear it in a different way. So when, you, when they say, um, hey, Jay, I want, you know, is your 3.75 available? I hear it different, right? So when anyone says, I, number one is I never really ask them the question to where they say I want the lowest rate. If they say, you know, uh, if we do go over goals, though, because that's a question, a very hard question to remove from your conversation because it's natural. Right. It's almost like our, it's, it's, it's the way we kind of make sure they're even listening, right? right? Like, what do you want to do? Um, which is important to switch up the intro to a point where, you know, you're almost saying like, hey, before we go any further, let me just make sure you're in the right place. You're, you're, you're removing their, their, um, their guard 
and now you have them opened up so that you can move straight in for the exact desire. Mm. So um, and instead of saying, but if you want to say, let's say if you catch yourself to where you, you do ask again, like, hey, what's your goal today? And they do say, hey, I just want a lower rate. Hear it in a way that they're telling you they just want savings, right? right? Yeah. So, you know, even if you had it go, gone down that path and let's say you catch yourself where you're saying, well, okay, well, how can I help you? Last thing I want you to do is, is overthink it and say, oh, fuck, I'm not supposed to ask that question, right? right? But just kind of slowly train yourself to stop asking that question. Um, but if they said, uh, you know what, Jay, I'm looking for a lower interest rate. Our natural response is, well, what's your rate, yeah. right? Um, my rate's 3.75. There's only so many different places you can go from there. So, so if you do ask them, well, you know, what's your goal? I want to lower my interest rate. Okay, got it. And with regards to your mortgage payment and your mortgage um, loan, is that the only thing that you pay on your credit report or their revolving debts? That's a perfect way to kind of um, uh, merge into other debts, right? Because when you're aware that the market is in a rate and term market anymore it's more about debt consolidation we got to kind of make sure that they even fit within that cookie cutter shape or we got to move them make sense so um that's the only thing that i I would really recommend is just watch out for for putting the ball in their court and guiding them straight to the process instead think of of different questions that you can open up their needs um like um you know you know because right after the script after you get a chance to read it then the, then the question is, well, what question do I ask them first? Mm-hmm. And the, the, you have to reverse engineer it, right? So you have to start with one of the most sensitive questions that, that you can ask anybody. And it's basically, are you living check to check? Because that's our ideal prospect, right? right? So how do we ask them without being so rude? And you basically reverse engineer it. So in other words, how do I ask you how much you have in your checking and savings? I'm going to ask you, number one, how much do you actually net your net income. How much of your net income do you net at the end of every month? So, so in other words, well, how do I, how do I even get there? Well, you got to ask, well, how much do you make gross in order to figure out the net, right? And then you ask, okay, well, what, what, what would that matter? And then you move backwards even a little bit further and say, okay, well, I got to be talking about debt in order to open up the conversation of income. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So, so then you start with debt. So that's why one of the very first questions I ever ask is, besides this mortgage, if you, on your credit report, um, you know, what other debts are open? Is it just the mortgage or do you have revolving debt? Uh, yeah, I got some credit cards. Right? A lot of them do have credit cards. Mm-hmm. Now, you're either going to go in two different directions. Number one is um, they're going to say I only got about maybe two grand in credit card debt. This is a sign that they know how to handle their finances. So now you're starting to switch up the dialogue of the conversation, talking about maybe shortening the term, Mm -hmm. cutting off years off the life of their loan. So maybe you would pivot to, um, you know, the property, do you plan to retire here? How long have you owned it? You should have your property profile up anyway to know how long they've owned it, right? So if you find out that they owe about two grand in credit card debt, then I'm I'm shifting my, my focus of debt consolidation to maybe shortening the life of their loan. So going from like a like a 30 to maybe a 20, right? Or if they don't intend to retire here, maybe they could fix up the property. So I'm asking them questions like, on a scale of one through 10, how do you rate the condition of your house, right? right. And they say, I rated it an eight. Okay, and what do you think you could do to the home to make it a 10? And then they start announcing things and say, okay, and do you intend to retire here? No, okay, got it. When do you plan to sell if you did sell? three years. Now I can put two and two together and say, okay, I can give you cash to turn that into a 10 before you sell it. Does that make sense? Right. Or enjoy at least the quality of the property in the interim while you live there so you could reap more benefit in case you decided to sell it a little bit sooner. Mm-hmm. So ultimately what you're doing is you're just finding ways to kind of corner them right. as opposed to um, talk about and update and educate them about the market. Right, right, right. Because that will that will leave you to where a lot of people are just going to talk to you just for information. Right. And you're not really going to come out with anything from it. Okay. So they can get the information elsewhere or they can get the information from us if they earn that, that time, mm-hmm. right? So I think that just by making those small tweaks, you'll get more engagement or at least more um, the momentum that you want. Because if the faster you can identify whether or not you can even deliver a solution to them, the faster you can get off the phone, right? But don't let 
the rate or the market be what influences that that conversation, mm -hmm. right? You got to get and dig a little bit deeper than that. So um, even if let's say let's use a, another example, if they say, you know, um, outside of the mortgage, are there any other debts on your credit report like revolving debt or credit cards? And they say, yeah, I got about thirty grand. Got it. How much do you send towards that thirty grand? Um, I send about maybe five hundred dollars. You know, you have to listen to the way they say it. So if they say I send, then you're probably more than likely talking to the finance controller, right? Like this person knows his finances. He's the one who sends out the bills, but you still want to confirm it. But if they say that, um, you know, we send, then you know you're already planting seeds and not talk about price on that conversation until you have that other person, that other part of we. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. um, because what I found is that when you talk to price with one party, you leave it up to them to regurgitate that information back to the other party. Um, so it's probably best to, to protect your time. But because of the way a call center works, you want to, it's all, it's all chess, right? It's never, it's not checkers, not one upping the other company or anything like that. It's really all about chess and positioning yourself to be where you're almost like you're playing poker, where you have to make it seem like you got a stronger card than you really do. Um, and you're not going to show them everything that you could do yet until you know that you can actually go in for the close. Right. So um, now on another, uh, you know, on that one example where they say they got 30 grand in credit card debt and they said, I, I think we send about a thousand dollars per month. Then you could start moving into the pressure points because we know they got debt. We know there's a potential deal. But the mo but the um, the average loan officer is going to be like, OK, well, what's his rate now? Right. Because we're thinking of future obje objections. It's like, okay, well, I could talk this guy into pulling debt out or pulling cash out for debt consolidation, but what's your rate right now, Mr. Johnson? And they say, my rate's 3.75. I never really go over their interest rate until absolutely ne until we need to, mm -hmm. right? Until then, I'm, I'm actually just capturing as much leverage as possible so that I can quickly move them down the line. But you want to avoid opening up the conversation to where it's an interview, where you feel like um, they're interviewing you, right? And you'll know that it's turning into an interview if you're answering questions and waiting for another one, right? right? So you're answering the question and, and you're kind of, there's that blank silence and if there's more questions. It should always pivot to, here, watch, let me show you. I'll prepare some disclosures and have them sent to you and then take back control of the conversation and try to find more leverage. Now, if it turns out that there's no benefit, like you're talking to, you know, Jim with Perfect FICO, um, he's got a strong amount of money in the bank, um, he's got a 3.25 30-year fix from 2015, then, then there's only so many different directions we could take them, right? So we can maybe do an ICANN mortgage for eight years, or we could talk about the condition of the property to see if he's open and willing to fix the home. We could find out if he's going to retire there. So we could still ask questions to create cash out opportunity. But if you find out that he's good, he's straight, say, okay, well, this is what I'll do. I'll go ahead and keep your contact information uh, in my system. Once the market improves to where I can deliver a benefit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be alerted by my system. You see, our technology here is awesome. So when the market improves or your property value improves, I'm actually, it's going to trigger me so I can notify you automatically. Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a no, blah, 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 and then depart and then move on to the next one. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So on that script is an is a outbound um, sales script too, which is powerful um, if you're going through inactives or mm -hmm. Shark Tank. Um, Shark Tank, I've noticed, is a little bit different now because the, I think the most recent one that they have is like 2016. Mm -hmm. It's not to say there's no deals in there. There's still deals in there. But if you adopt the techniques that Mo was going over mm -hmm. in their training... Of, of creating buckets, um, maybe you got a bucket strictly of Shark Tank, right, inside of your CRM, or your group, I mean. Um, but in actives is probably where you're going to find the lowest hanging fruit. From the email that I sent of those, the names of the agents that take high amount of prospects but are not converting, those are typically the ones who, you know, are, are, are either turning and burning the deals, so they're inactivating anything that they can't do a rate and term refinance for, right? right? So I'd, I'd go into um, inactives and I'd uh, prioritize the LO name to look specifically for them. And, and then I'd pick out lending tree leads, all lending tree leads. 
um, and then hit them up with that uh, with that with that script. And the script's a little bit different. It has nothing to do with like, hey, my name's Daniel with New American Funding. I just want to see if you're in the market. It sounds nothing like that. Uh, if anything, what it sounds like is, um, hey, we forgot to send out this report. I know that you talked to us a while back, but it looks like you never got this cool report. This new report we actually just rolled out this year, and I want to make sure you get your hands on it. So I'm going to go ahead and email it to the Gmail account we have on file. It's actually going to be on its way. Okay, yeah, go ahead and send it, Jay. Okay, well, I got you on the phone. Let me go ahead and confirm. Um, apparently, when you had talked to us, you did an online inquiry with LendingTree, right? Okay, let me confirm because there's a couple buttons that I could push to where it's actually tailored for you. Now, the upside for that, Jay, is that it's going to be worth your time in reviewing, but be a little bit more accurate than just gener generic information. Does that make sense? So, um, what, what was the intent of the inquiry? Was it to get cash out? You know, do Because there, there's no friction there. The way you're opening up is like, okay, well, he's just sending me a report. He's just tailoring it. Little do you, did he know we're actually starting the process over again, yeah. right? So in, in finding out that like, oh, you know what? I just wanted uh, the lowest rate, um, but you guys couldn't beat this one offer. Okay, well, who did you go with, right? It's like, um, you know what? I didn't end up going with anybody. And then the market went up. Got it. So let me ask you, the reason why you wanted a lower rate was to create savings, right? What, would, what was the plans with the savings? Oh, I was going to take the savings and pay off my credit card debt. Got it. How much in credit card debt do you owe? I owe about 40 grand. Hmm. How much are you sending? About 1,000. Minimum or is that above and beyond? You see how that goes? Because if that loan officer inactivated the file because they also went straight into pricing in the very beginning of the conversation, then, then they're inactivating because they just simply didn't drive the conversation correctly. And so that's money sitting inside those inactives. So all you're doing is just covertly extracting that information. So again, how it sounds like, um, uh, you know, hey, this is Daniel with New American Funding. Um, I, I know that you had contacted us before. This is just a quick courtesy call. We're going through all those who contacted us within the last six months and did not receive our complimentary report. It's actually on its way. It's this real neat report we just rolled out this year. It tells you helpful information about your school district, helpful information about your local properties that sold within your area, so you know how much your value is going into 2019. Super helpful report. I'm actually going to send it to the Gmail account that we have on, on file, and uh, it's actually on its way. Uh, I just need to confirm this email is where you want me to send it. Yeah, go ahead and send it. Now, that's your bridge to go in, right? Um, even in the event that they, that they don't answer the phone, then the voice message is going to sound very similar. Is going to be like, uh, you know, hey, this is Daniel with New American Funding, just doing a quick courtesy uh, check-in. Um, there's a report that should have been delivered to you when you talked to us last on November of last year. This report actually just released this year. We want to make sure that you get your hands on it as a complimentary thank or as, as a way of saying thank you for spending some time with us. You know, whether you decide to use a report or not, it's completely your choice, but it's going to give you some real helpful information about your property on MyFerd. So before I email it to you, I'll go ahead and wait for your call back. If I don't hear from you, I'll give you a call back, or you can reply back to my email. And then, and then that voice message is followed up with an email. Email says the same exact thing. Hey, Jim, sorry I missed you, right? Um, uh, I just left you a voice message. Hope this email finds you well. Please confirm that this email is valid and you'd like me to release the courtesy report that I left the voice message on about. So they're going to respond to either one, right? Um, but you just want to kind of open that dialogue back up. Does that make sense? So that way, that way, if you're ever kind of sitting and waiting for leads, you could still hunt for deals, right? right? Uh, but now you have, you have the tools necessary to hunt and you kind of have a strategy of how to hunt them. Gotcha. Because the, the traditional way or traditional route that's being used is people are just calling through the inactives and they're just saying, you know, hey, I know you spoke to Bob three months ago. Um, you know, the market changed. You want to see if I can maybe answer any other questions for you. You know, there's not really a good defined approach yet to approach those inactives. And then you can get the feedback from the other team members too on what their, you know, best practice is. Mm -hmm. yeah. That sounds great. Oh, that was good. I was, I went through Shark Tank or inactives there and grabbed a couple that were possibly spoke to a couple, but nothing, nothing solid as of yet. Okay, how's your approach? 
Uh, the approach was I was uh, giving up a customer service call. Okay. Uh, looks like the file is in limbo, and you know we need to disposition it one way or another. Um, and if it was a thing where we dropped the ball, then you know th if they tell us we dropped the ball, then I'll go in one angle. But uh, for the most part, they weren't interested in uh, what we had to say. Well, I kind of um, go in a perspective of you know uh, providing a customer service follow up. Was there anything that we did wrong? Is there anything we could have done better? And depending upon the answer, I kind of try to come up with a solution okay. for that. But what are you running into most if you do connect with somebody? I'm sorry? What do you run into most if you did connect with somebody and you go through that pitch uh -huh. or that, that script? What are they saying? I've only talked to two people and they didn't have time to talk. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't really got into it too deep. I was reverse searching it so I didn't exactly take the leads, but just to contact them. And then I ended up taking a couple. Okay. Uh, but I have only gotten about two people on the phone in terms of the inactives. Okay. If I were going through inactives right now, I would use that name guide as, as kind of a target area, right? And then um, prioritize that list based on that agent's name and just get every loan amount above 300 grand, okay. right? Um, because it's okay if, if, if I don't get a hold of them, they're my property now. So if for whatever reason they called in, it's not going to go on, on to the next available agent. It's going to come to me. Okay. And because you're so new, it's okay to farm out leads right now. So you okay. can take 900 a day right now. Okay. No, you're not going to get sweated. Okay. Um, where I know that a lot of people come from like that Cooper background, they're worried about the conversion right. or like how does it work against us. Uh, the, the thing here is that really there's only red flags alerted where if there's high amount of prospects but no deals moving. Right. So if you if you get a lot of amount, a large amount of data and it's being pulled through an active, it's just a simple communication. It's just like, hey, I'm claiming a bunch of deals from an active. Right. We are actually happier as being worked rather than just sitting inside of an active queue. Okay. Right. So I think that if you if you maybe take a few minutes to go through that script, kind of model it and mold it to yours, mm -hmm. you'll find that um, that it'll it'll help you gain a little bit more response mm -hmm. and control the conversation so the outbound the only the only reason why i would say don't use hey your it looks like your your file is in limbo because immediately i'm going to think i don't have a file with you delete make sense mm -hmm. um whereas if i if, if i went a completely different side approach and i just said hey this is a quick complimentary call or courtesy call i know you spoke with us in november but on our records, it doesn't look like we ever sent you out this report. It's a real neat report. It's proprietary to us, and we just rolled out this this uh, report in, um, this this year. It launched in 2019, and it's helping a lot of homeowners in your community uh, figure out the rating of the school system, what the property sold within your area, and since it was never delivered to you, I want to go ahead and send it out to you now. And I, I have the Gmail account, right? Like D N I C A T uh, at Gmail dot com. Is that the is that email still valid they'll agree and comply because it's they feel like it's already on its way and there's no friction but right when they agree that 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 they'll accept it whether it's on email or by voice or phone then it's your way to open up the dialogue and say okay well before i send it out let me go and tailor it for you a little bit you know i know you spoke with us in november from an internet inquiry um what was the intent was it to shorten your term or just maximize your savings so notice I'm not saying anything about rate or term or cash out or anything like that, right? So it's like, oh, well, my intent was to um, to lower my payment. Got it. Okay, did you get that done? And then it's like, yeah, I'm in the process with. Okay, cool. What, what rate did you lock in? I locked in about 3.75. Okay. And did you do an appraisal yet? Like this just opens a dialogue, right? But if in the event they say, no, I never got around to it. Okay. Is the goal still the same to lower your payment? And then you can kind of break it on and, and carry on the dialogue from there. But you're going to get more response if, if it's more courtesy. People like courtesy things. Mm -hmm. People like free shit, right? You're going to add a little bit of curiosity by saying, um, this is real, it's this brand new proprietary report or this neat report or this cool report we just launched this month. I want to make sure you get your hands on it for the time you spent with us back in July of last year, right? Because our records show you never received a copy, so it's just a push of a button for me. It's super easy. Just confirming is this Gmail account still valid? Say, so, yeah, Jay, go ahead and send it through. That Gmail account's perfect. 
got it. I'm going to go ahead and send it out today. As a matter of fact, while I have you, let me go ahead and tailor it and mold it out for you. And now you have your, your chance to kind of open up that dialogue again. See how that works? Mm -hmm. The transition phrase is great. Yeah, it's all, it's all about the transitions, you know, to continue pushing in them towards that end. And then when you get it down packed, you know, it becomes a little bit more fluent. It's easier, but ensure that every phone call is also um, followed up by an email. And every file you touch, you ask for consent on the text. Because what it, what, it, what it does is it just puts you on the radar. So if they get a text asking for consent, a lot of times they'll reply back and be like, who is this? Mm -hmm. But you can't reply back because they never gave consent. Um, so, but at least you have your email. Mm -hmm. So then the email says something like, hey, I just sent you over a text. And then they put two and two together like, oh, that was Jay. Okay, cool. Hey, yeah, I got your text consent. Either way, they're going to respond back or you're more than likely going to hit them up. But some of these leads, they already gave consent because maybe they opened the dialogue, but then they inactivate it because they stopped calling. So you're going to find that you're, you're able to text them. So have scripts available where it's just a copy and paste. You can minimize the typing back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, the emails that you send out, have it as a template, save it as a signature so it's fast, mm -hmm. right? And so every single lead you touch, you're hitting them in three different ways. Phone call, um, text, and email. So a lot of times you're going to reach voicemail, people screen calls, right? But if you see like a good juicy one, you want to do that two call. So you call them, once you get voicemail, hang up, call them back again, right? right? It's always a pretty popular way to get someone to answer. But if in the event that um, you get the voice message again, still leave a voice message, but it has to, to point out to the other two messages. So, um, hey, you know, I'm always saying, hey, sorry, I missed you. Because it makes you think like, man, was I trying to contact them? And then they want to hear more. Right. So, um, uh, hey, Jay, sorry, I missed you. This is Daniel with New American. And I'm not saying, hey, Mr. Smith or hey, um, this is Daniel Neekart. I'm just saying Daniel as if we know each other. Right. Make sense. So, hey, this is Daniel with New American, uh, New American Funding. Hey, uh, I, I'm going to go and send you over a text. I'll even send you an email. If I don't hear back from you, I'll give you a call again. This has to do with that courtesy report. I need to know if I could send it to your Gmail account. Let me know, you can text me back, you can reply back to my email. If I don't hear from you, I'll call you again in a couple hours. Very plain and simple, it's over, it's repetitive, right? So if they hear that and they don't know they wanna call you, then that's fine, I've left them an out to at least respond by text or email. So if they respond by text and email, then I have the dialogue open again, right? right? And say, okay, cool, I'm gonna go and send it, is this Gmail account work, okay, cool. All I'm talking about is that property profile report, which is something, by the way, you wanna hold for hostage. That's something that you, you use later if necessary. Whereas I think a lot of LOs are sending out too, too early. It's because it's so easy to send it out. But you want to use that as bait if you need to get them back engaged with you again. Right. Make sense? So um, otherwise, we, you know, we can just tell them the information. There's no need to actually send that property profile report. But I think if you just understand kind of the use of the tools, in the system in place and kind of create more of what, like I, I like to think of it as a funnel. You're just funneling them from, from generally interested down to a little bit more interested to pitch, right? But it's constantly moving down the pipe. It can never be to where it's just lead management because then you're just gonna burn up your time, not gonna flip any deals. Like you said, be the tour guide, right? Right, tour guide. It's always like, yeah, watch, come here. You know, like there's a tonality where it's like, yeah, watch, let me show you. Oh yeah, check this out. <laughs> right? Like, oh yeah, let me confirm first. Because sometimes they're going to sway you from that conversation. Be like, you know, Jay, tell me about blah, 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 blah. Right? Let me ask you a couple questions. You can tell sometimes they just want to chop it up and burn your time. But they got to get a sense where they, they're they moving, right? They're moving They're moving towards the end. Well, that's, that's a good point too because it's a good way of taking control of the conversation without sounding rude or sounding right. like a jackass, right? Right. Which, you know, a lot of times you're, you know, you can easily say, let's get back on track or yeah. let's, you know, stop telling me about your kids. Let's <laughs> yeah. stop, you know, that, that, that's it's rude, right? Yeah. It's rude. We don't want to say that. So that's a good transition. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Because you, you might get people that, because I think the way that you talk to them naturally will open up people. So that's an advantage. They're wanting to talk to you clearly because they're spending time with you on the phone. Whereas a lot of salespeople can push them away because they sound too salesy where you could take that as that 
kind of that advantage. And if you find yourself with people that are just kind of going left field and not mm. staying the course, and you want to interrupt them but not sound rude, you get to be like, um, hey, you know what? You reminded me before I forget. And you can actually interrupt them. Right. And then actually ask them the question back on course. Wait, well, hey, that reminds me before I forget. Very nice way to take back control of the conversation. That's a good one. And interrupt them. <laughs>